greetings brothers and sisters wherever you are tuned in we are in the response number three and uh, the response number three deals with day two of the presentation of the CAM meeting which actually deals with the warning about this subject of the Godhead. Remember what um, we are looking at. Remember what we are looking at is the official article that uh, has been given outside there by Pastor Jeremy Mwenda Marambi for presenting the Bible study lesson in the CAM meeting of 2019 and we are responding to this document and today we are on day two. We did two sessions on day one which we looked at um, the concept of Trinity and the book and the second presentation was on the book of Matthew chapter 28 verses 19 and today we go to day two of Pastor Marambi's document in the Bible lesson study come meeting 29 which talks about the subject warning about this subject of the Godhead and uh, remember he is advocating about the three gods the Trinity God and this is what we are looking at in in depth and so once again, I welcome you, uh, the Gospel Sound as Rekindling Reformation Ministry welcomes you to response number three on the document of Pastor Marambi on a um, uh, warning about this subject of the Godhead. So, uh, uh, wherever you are, take your Bible. Take your notebook and uh, let us see the uh, text that um, he gives out to explain the uh, Trinity concept or the warning um, uh, on presentation number three, the warning uh, on this subject uh, of uh, uh, the Godhead. And uh, before we just uh, go deeply into the study, uh, like us to offer a word of prayer and uh, dwell in the issue. A Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for thou hast been with us, and we thank you for thy Bible, which is thy living testimony, and to guide thy children into the whole truth. And as we look at this subject, we pray of thy presence to continually be with us and uh, guide us in all truth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And so, let us straight away go to this presentation. Uh, Pastor Marambi says, in regard to the personality and the prerogatives of God, where he is and what he is, is a subject which we are not there to touch. On this theme, silent is eloquent. Those who have no experimental knowledge of God venture to speculate in regard to him are in utter inability as human beings to explain the creator. We have to make this point clear that uh, the father and the son believers have never tried to explain the creator as he is quoting the medical ministry but they have limited themselves to actually what the Bible gives as an evidence of uh, God as it is revealed in the scriptures. And so Pastor Marambi goes on to say, the argument of those against the Holy Spirit, they say general conference, unions and conferences are in apostate for they believe in the Holy Spirit. No one has ever said that the general conference, the unions and the conference are in apostate because they believe in the Holy Spirit. What we are saying that they are in apostate in believing that there is God, the Holy Spirit. This is apostasy and utter uh, 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 
add to adding to the scriptures where actually it has not said such a, a thing. He continues, Trinity, uh, sorry, he continues, Trinity is not biblical and it is uh, uh, as and it is a uh, Omega of Apostles Eastern religion. Had the, Trinity is not biblical and it is a uh, Omega of Apostles Eastern religion had the Trinity. And uh, in regard to the personality and prerogative of God, where he is and what he is is a subject which we are not uh, to dare to touch. On this theme, silent is eloquent. Those who have no experimental religion of God venture to speculate in regard to him. And we are not speculating. In fact, you will find that those who believe in Trinity are the ones that speculate upon the subject because they would like to give a meaning in the Bible, which is not actually uh, uh, there. And so we, uh, the people who believe in the Father and the Son actually uh, uh, narrow their mind to what is revealed in the Word of God rather than going to speculate this word says this and this word says this. It is the Trinitarian doctrine that goes to speculate this. And so he says, uh, he goes on to say that we should not speculate on these things and then goes ahead and says there is one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, a unit of three co-eternal persons. Adventists believe, 28 fundamental beliefs, 2018, page 23. Uh, and then he goes ahead to compare and contrast. Right on from the start, this is actually not the truth because there is nothing like there is one God uh, and this one God is comprised of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. This is, he, he talks about us not going into speculation and he himself goes into speculation of saying that there is a one God of three persons. And so he has just gone against his own advice of not speculating or going or what the medical ministry says that uh, we should not go into. He is going into speculation by saying that there is one God and it comprises of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This is putting a meaning on the text which is not there. And then he says, let us then compare and contrast. And then he starts naming these gods. And uh, let us see how he goes ahead to speculate on the scriptures instead of reading them uh, 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 as they are. He says that there is God, the Holy Spirit, and here is his reasons of saying that uh, the Holy Spirit is God. And one of the texts that he gives to prove that God is a Holy Spirit is the book of Psalms 139, verse 7 to 9. And so let us look at the book of Psalms 139, verse 7 to 9, where actually Pastor Marambi says that uh, that verse proves that the Holy Spirit is God, is the second, uh, is the third God in the triangle God of um, uh, three persons. Psalms, let us look at Psalms. 1, 39, verses 7 to 9. He says that this, this one proves that this Holy Spirit is a God of its own. And these are the verses he quotes, and uh, I want to put them on the screen so that um, we may see them together. Let us read Psalms 139, verses 7 to 9, which he says that this proves that the Holy Spirit is God. Psalms 139. Psalms 139 verse 7 says, Whither shall I go from thy spirit? Or whither shall I flee from thy presence? And the subject here is not uh, that the Holy Spirit is God, but it's talking of uh, uh, God himself. It is talking of for, for, uh, of God himself. And uh, uh, it starts all the way from verse 1, and it says that um, uh, O oh Lord, thou hast searched me and known me. The subject is the Lord. And verse 2 has this to say, verse 2 has this to say, that uh, 
Thou knoweth my down sitting and my uprising, thou understandest my thought. And then verse 7 continues to speak about this Lord, and it says, Whither shall I go from thy spirit? So the, the word thy spirit belongs to the Lord in verse 1. And so the Lord in verse 1 is not God the Holy Spirit, but God himself. And so Pastor Marambi by uh, saying that the book of Psalms 139 verse 7 says that uh, uh, the Holy Spirit is God. It proves that the Holy Spirit of God, that is a far-fetched statement, which means that he is reading in the Bible what is not there while warning us that uh, we should not speculate on verses or inspiration, but we should read them as they are. Verse 8, verse, uh, verse eight says, If I ascend up in heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. And so, uh, brothers and sisters, we find that uh, the verses that um, uh, the verses that Pastor Marambi gives to show that the Holy Spirit is God, Psalms 139, verse 7 to 9, it is actually dealing with thy spirit, the spirit of who? The spirit of the Lord mentioned in verses, uh, verses 1. The second uh, 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 scripture, the other scripture he gives for the Holy Spirit being God, he gives Hebrews chapter 9 verse 14. Let us read the book of Hebrews chapter 9 verse 14 and see if it is saying that the Holy Spirit is God, the Holy Spirit. The book of Hebrews, that is a New Testament book, Hebrews chapter 9 verses 14. What does it say then? Hebrews chapter 9 verses 14. This is what it says. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? As you can see, the book of Hebrews chapter 9 verse 14 doesn't say God the Holy Spirit. It says the eternal spirit. It is the one that actually enabled Jesus Christ to go through this life on earth and be able to purge us from the dead work. So it is reading in the text what is not there, uh, that the Holy Spirit is God because the word eternal spirit is mentioned there. And we covered this verse in the first presentation where we found out that uh, the spirit is eternal because it comes from the person who is eternal and it is the spirit of god that is why it is eternal and then pastor marambi goes on now to say in luke chapter 1 verse 35 it proves that god the holy spirit is god uh he goes on to quote luke chapter 135, to prove that uh, the Holy Spirit is God. And let us look at uh, the book of Luke, chapter 1, verses 35 then. Luke, chapter 1, verses 35. Does it say that actually the Holy Spirit is God? The book of Luke, chapter 1, verses 35 says, And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Brothers and sisters, you can see how Pastor Marambi is playing gymnastics on his uh, verses that he's giving to prove that the Holy Spirit is God. How can you read the book of Luke chapter 1 verse 35 and say that this proves that actually the Holy Spirit is God? Is God. Because it says that, um, and the angel said and said unto her, the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee. The power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Even a little child knows that the power of the highest is the power of the Father who is in heaven. And the, when you read the totality of the book of Luke, it talks about uh, the Holy Spirit overshadowing Mary, the Spirit of God, the power of God overshadowing Mary, and then uh, what was born 
was that um, uh, uh, holy uh, uh, thing. And so, uh, a, a person who reads Luke chapter 1, verse 35, and then says that actually this, uh, the power of the highest uh, or the Holy Ghost is God, is reading something that is not in the verse. And uh, uh, this is how we put uh, gymnastics on the vivid scriptures that has um, been uh, revealed in the Bible by quoting things which are not written uh, there. And so while Pastor Marambi is telling us not to go into speculation, he is the one who is going into speculations of the things which are not there. And uh, it is so sorry that uh, we can employ such a defense in uh, a, a doctrine which is so mysterious uh, in the Bible uh, uh, itself. And uh, I'm looking at uh, uh, a verse in Acts that speaks about uh, that Jesus Christ. This is... Uh, In the book of Acts chapter 4, book of Acts chapter 4, just I want to tie in with the book of Luke, the book of Acts chapter 4, verses uh, 27 and uh, verses 30. The book of Acts chapter 4, verses uh, 27 downwards, it say, For of truth, Thy holy child Jesus, whom thou hast anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate with the Gentiles and the people of Israel were gathered together. For to do whatsoever thy hand and thy counsel determined before to be done. And now, Lord, behold thy threatenings and grant unto thy servants that which with all boldness they may speak thy word, by stretching forth thine hand to heal, and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of the holy child. So Jesus Christ is called that holy child. And why is he that holy child? Go back to the book of Luke chapter 1. The book of Luke, Luke chapter 1 verses 35. And the angel said, and the angel answered and said unto Mary, the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore, also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. So by the Holy Spirit of God overshadowing Mary, what came out was a holy thing. And that holy thing, the book of Acts chapter 4, verses 27, and Acts chapter 4, verse 30, calls that holy thing the Holy Child. So, uh, brothers and sisters, the book of Luke chapter 1, verse 4, verse 35, does not say that God the Holy Spirit. And uh, uh, this is a misrepresentation of the scripture. Another verse he gives us to prove that the Holy Spirit is God is John chapter 14, verse 16. And so let us look at the book of Luke, John chapter 14, verse 16 then. The Bible says, in the book of John, chapter 4, verses 16. John, chapter 14, verses 16. And let us look at this. Uh, it says, And I'll pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide you with you forever. Now, he says that the Bible verse, John 14, 16, proves that the Holy Ghost is God, and uh, he gives the scripture, John chapter 14, verses 16. Now, this is interesting, because reading a little further, you find this. In verse 17, it says, to prove that this is not another God called the 
God the Holy Spirit. It says that uh, even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but you know him for he dwelleth with you and then shall be in you. And so you find that the comforter is the person who was dwelling with them. And we understand that the person who was dwelling with them was Jesus Christ. And at that time, he shall be with them. And so Pastor Marambi negates what is written in verse 17 and says that verse 16 uh, proves that the Holy Spirit is God. He's reading into something. He is picking verses without their context and presenting something that actually it is not truth per se. And I, I like to look at the commentary of uh, uh, this verse, John chapter 14, verses 16 and verses 17. Let us look at the commentary of John chapter 14, verses 15, verses 16 and 17. Now, this is inspiration, brothers and sisters, and we said we will only limit ourselves to the Bible text and what the inspiration says. He says that John chapter 14, verse 16, proves that the Holy Spirit is God. But in verse 17, it says that the, the person who was dwelling with them is the one who will be with them. And there is a commentary on this, and we have to go to the inspiration to see what it says about this verse. And 14 MR, 14 MR, page 179, paragraph 2 says, It is not essential for you to know and be able to define just what the Holy Spirit is. So by saying that uh, the Spirit is God, the Holy Spirit, that is entering into the realm of defining what the Holy Spirit is. Pastor Marambi started by saying that we should not do this, yet he is doing the same by saying that John 14, 16 proves that the Holy Spirit is God. But here inspiration is still reminding him that it is not essential for you to know and be able to define just what the Holy Spirit is. Continued on, it says, Christ tells us that the Holy Spirit is the Comforter, and the Comforter is the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of Truth, which the Father shall send in my name. I'll pray the Father, and he shall give you another Comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Even the Spirit of Truth, whom the world cannot receive, and because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but you know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. John 14, 16 and 17, the prophetess quotes. And then she goes ahead and says what John 14, 16 and 17 says. He says that this comforter refers, this refers to the omnipresent of the spirit of Christ. He, she doesn't say that this is God, the Holy Spirit, as Pastor Marambi says. She says this is the, this refers to the omnipresent of the spirit of Christ called the comforter. So the spirit, the comforter that he is talking about in John chapter 14, verse 16, as God, the Holy Spirit, inspiration tells us so well that this refers to the omnipresence of the spirit of Christ called the comforter. And uh, 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 one, when, while I was studying this thing today, I found out something so interesting that uh, maybe I have never seen or people have never seen. It says, I'll pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, and he shall, and that he may abide with you forever. The word forever caught my attention uh, so much, and I started thinking about it, that the comforter will abide with you forever. And I, I wanted to see in some other places where actually this ties in. And when you go to John, the, the book of Matthew chapter 28, the book of Matthew chapter 28, look at verse 20. The Great Commission, he says in 19, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. So 
The word forever in John chapter 14 verse 16 is tied together with Christ saying that I will be with you always. The Holy Spirit was to be with them forever and Christ is saying in Matthew chapter 28 verses 20 that I will be with you always. And so while you are reading 14 MR 179.2, it says that the comforter is the omnipresent spirit of Christ and Christ himself will be with them always. He shall dwell with them forever. Because in 17, in verse 17 of John chapter 14, it says that the one who was with them shall be in them. And the previous says, says forever. And Christ says in the book of Matthew chapter 28, always. So I found out that one to be much of interesting to me. And uh, so the verses that uh, Pastor Marambi has given that are saying that the Holy Spirit is God, by reading them, even just casual reading them, it doesn't say what it is saying. And uh, he says that once Psalms 139, and we have looked that, it says that it is the Spirit of God. Then he says that contrast this with this, that all the attributes that has been given to the Holy Spirit in the previous verses now are the same attributes given to God. Now, I won't go to reading the verses he has given for uh, the attributes of God because we have just found out the other verses are speaking of the Spirit of Christ or the Spirit of the Lord. And so it, it is, uh, I say, it's basically a waste of time uh, putting out something like this. And uh, the attributes that are given to the Spirit are given to it because it belongs to God. So it cannot have any other attributes apart from the attributes of God himself. If God is eternal, his spirit is eternal. If God is omnipotent, his spirit is omnipotent. And if God is powerful and omnipresent, then his spirit is omnipresent. So all the verses he has given above refers to the spirit of God. And the spirit of God has those attributes of God because it belongs to God. And uh, so he, he, he goes ahead and says, the Holy Spirit has same characteristics with God, omnipresence, eternal, or powerful. But those are deductions. I, I, I thank him because he says they are deductions. They are not the truth. Therefore, the Bible plainly declares that the Holy Spirit is indeed a God. This is a bold-faced lie. Saying, therefore, the Bible plain declares. How do you say it's a deduction and then turn and say it declares? Unless the word deduction is equivalent to the word declare, which I understand that actually that is not basic dictional even. Therefore, the Bible plainly declares that the Holy Spirit is indeed a God. Where? He can't provide the verses because the verses provided does not say that. And also you can now begin to understand that the Holy Spirit was one of the gods. Now, this is interesting because Pastor Marambi quotes Genesis chapter 1 verses 2 to say that the Holy Spirit was one of the gods beings in the beginning who created the heaven and earth. This is interesting for a pastor of a conference to quote Genesis 1-2 to prove that the Holy Spirit is a God that participated in creation. Brothers and sisters, it shows that uh, either there is some ignorance being played or the pastors have done away with inspiration. Let us look at Genesis 1-2 and see, does this prove that the Holy Spirit is God? The Bible says, and the Bible reads, and those who don't have the text on the screen, I'll put the text on the screen so that we read together or you read yourself for yourself and see what the Bible is saying. The book of Genesis chapter 1 verses 1 and 2. This is what it says. Listen to what the Holy Bible says. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And then we go to verse 2, because he says verse 2 proves that the Holy Spirit is God, the Holy Spirit. Verse 2 has this to say. It says, and uh, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. 
and the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep and whoever is reading with me and the spirit of god moved upon the face of the waters the, the verse doesn't say brethren and god the holy spirit moved upon the waters it says the spirit of god and so this is a play game on the words of the bible or casting out inspiration like if i say that the spirit of sami it doesn't change to be something else it is my spirit it is my own life my own self that is here and so when the bible says the spirit of god to change it to read god the holy spirit it is something totally outside what the spirit of um uh uh, what uh, the Bible itself says. So, Pastor Marambi quoting Genesis 1-2 to, to say that God the Holy Spirit participated in creation. This is a mere negation of the Holy Scriptures. And uh, uh, we, we can still go on and look at um, some of the things uh, being addressed in the book of uh, Genesis 1-2. And uh, this, this will take us long. And uh, uh, I wish that the people will read the Bible as um, it is written uh, rather than deducing, actually, deducing the words of the Bible rather than deducing the words of God. When you read in the language of the bible how it was written genesis 1 2 this is what we have in genesis 1 2 in the the, the the bible the jewish bible and the earth was without was tohu vahu without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep and the ruach elohim was hovering upon the face of the world the, the Jewish Bible translates those words as the breath of Elohim, as the breath of God. While the English one takes the spirit of God. And so even in reading in the uh, Jewish Bible, you find that it says that the work of Elohim is the one that was brooding, hovering upon the face of the deep. And so it is a denial of the scripture to say that actually... Uh, Genesis 1-2 says that God, the Holy Spirit, participated in uh, creating the world. I, I like also to point something in Genesis 1-2 and uh, Psalms. Let us go to the division of Psalms and let us see what it says about this verse, Genesis 1-2, the book or the division of Psalms. Uh, that is... Um, the division of Psalms 33, verses 6. Let us see what it says there. Talking about creation. By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. What is in Genesis verse, what is in Genesis 1, 2, the psalmist says something else on the same verse. The psalmist says something else. That is the division of Psalms 33. Division of Psalms 33 verses 6. Verses 6. This is what it says. By the word of the Lord were the heavens made and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. What is translated as by the breath of his mouth, it is what is found in Genesis 1 to the Spirit of God. So Genesis chapter 1 verse 2 doesn't prove any God, the Holy Spirit, uh, according to the word of God. And uh, uh, the same thing is found in the in in, uh, in the Jewish Bible. This is how they translate Psalms one thirty nine, Psalms thirty three verses six, and uh, it says that of them by the work, the breath of his mouth. So the breath the, the breath of his mouth is work. You found out that the Jewish Bible translated Genesis one two as the work of Elohim. 
the Spirit of God. And now in Psalms 33, verse 6, they translate as the work of his mouth, the spirit of his mouth. So, brethren, brothers and sisters, Genesis chapter 1, verse 2 does not say God, the Holy Spirit. Now, who participated in creation? Who participated in creation? Let us seal that point by this. Uh, looking at... Uh, Looking at uh, Genesis chapter 1, verses 26. And God said, let us make man in our image. Who participated actually in creation, we ask ourselves. Who participated? Who was God uh, actually speaking to? Who was God speaking to? In uh, Spiritual Gifts, Volume 3, we find who was with God in creation. Spiritual Gifts, Volume 3, page 33, paragraph 2. This is what it says. After the earth was created and the beasts upon it, the Father and the Son carried out their purpose, which was designed before the fall of Saturn, to make man in their own image. They had brought together in the creation of the earth and every living thing upon it. And now God says to his son, let us make man in our image. So God is speaking to his son. And then by the breath of Elohim, and we understand that the breath of Elohim here is the breath of God, the work of God which he has given to the son, he makes the son execute that commandment. And so in creation, God is speaking to his son. There is no third entity that God is speaking to. And so to say that Genesis 1-2 actually proves that um, uh, the Holy Spirit is God is to read into something that is not there while telling people not to speculate and read the plain word of God as it is, and you add what is not on the word of God. Another point that he makes is now, there he was in his deductions. Then he goes ahead to say, the Holy Spirit has a mind. And what verse does he quote? Romans 8.27. And so let us read Romans 8.27. He says that the Holy Spirit is God because the Holy Spirit has a mind. So let us go to Romans chapter 8, verses 29. And I hope you have your Bible, you have your notebook. Romans chapter 8, verses 27 says, and he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the, is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Now, it is strange when you read Romans 8.27, and you say that that proves that that is a verse that says God the Holy Spirit. Where is God the Holy Spirit in the verse? You ask yourself. And he says it is because the Holy Spirit has a mind. And he that searcheth the hearts knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will uh, of God. Now, let us look at the context of Romans chapter 8, verses 26 says, Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know what we, we know not, what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groaning, which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Now, when you read Romans chapter 8, verse 27, you can think that the mind is a word that belongs to the Spirit, but it can go the other way. The Holy Spirit knows the mind of the person it is interceding for. That is the concept that is in the book of Romans chapter 8, verse 27. But 
he says that he shifts and says that the mind is of the Holy Spirit. And so the mind, because the Holy Spirit has a mind, it is God, the Holy Spirit. But if you read the verse keenly, it says that it knows the mind of the person it is interceding for. And that's why it is qualified to make intercession because it can read the mind of the person it is interceding for. Now, look at the context, verse 6, 26. Likewise, the Spirit helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Now, what is this groanings? You go back to some few verses. You go back to the few verses, the context of Romans chapter 8. And verse 9 has this to say, But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. So the reason why the spirit can understand or can know the mind of the person it is interceding for, it is because it is the spirit of God and God is omniscience. He knows everything. And so it says, but ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man hath not the spirit of God, he is none of us. And it goes to say that, uh, and if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness, verse 11. But if the spirit of him who raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you. So the spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead. And we understand from the Bible text that uh, it is the Spirit of God that raised Jesus Christ from the dead. It says that it dwells in you. Shall He that raised up Jesus Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by His Spirit that dwelleth in you. So the Spirit of God that dwells in us is eternal omnis omniscient present or spirit, and so it knows our mind because God is omniscient and his spirit is omniscient. And I was speaking, what are these groanings that we cannot utter that the spirit uttereth for us? Jump to verse 17 of Romans chapter 8. It says, And if children then heirs, heirs of God, and joined heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. For I reckon that uh, sorry, verses 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received, received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. So the Spirit of God cried in us, Abba, Father. Galatians chapter 4, verse 6 says that because you are sons, God has sent the Spirit of the Son crying in our hearts, Abba, Father. It groans with the groanings that we cannot utter, and this is the Spirit of God. Another verse that he quotes to prove that the Holy Spirit is God, the Holy Spirit, is 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 8 to 11. So let us read 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verses 8 to 11. It says, but 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 8 to 11, God the Holy Spirit. It says, For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. But all this worketh that one and the self same spirit, dividing to every man several as he will. And so he says, the spirit gives gifts and it proves that it is a God. Now that is interesting, brothers and sisters. The spirit gives gifts and so it proves that the spirit is God, the Holy Spirit. Now, let us look into another verse in the Bible to see who actually give gifts. The book of Ephesians chapter 4. I don't know if Pastor Marambi is doing this purposely or he has neglected the Bible or he is 
in the business of misleading the children of God by saying such a things. That the Holy Spirit gives gifts, so it is God the Holy Spirit. So it is a God. Let us look at who gives the gifts then. The book of Ephesians. Has he forgotten about the book of Ephesians chapter 4? Let us read the book of Ephesians chapter 4. It says from verse 6, One God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. That is a verse that should be settling the matter. Verse 7, But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. So the gifts of the Holy Spirit are the gifts of Christ. And who gives these gifts? Continued on. Wherefore he said, when he ascended up high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. So I don't know if pastor read this or he didn't read this. While he is saying that the spirit gives gifts, so he is God, he is a God. But here it says, wherefore he hath, he said, when he ascended high, up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Verse 9, now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower part of the earth? He that descended is the same also that ascended up for far above all heaven that he might fill all things. And he gave some apostles, what is being mentioned in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 8 to 11, and some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors, and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. So Jesus Christ is the one that descended and ascended so that, and why did Jesus Christ descend? So that he may live in humanity. And after getting victory, we are told in Hebrews chapter 5, verse 7 to 9, that after being perfected, now he became the author of eternal salvation. So it is the divinity combined with humanity given unto us as a distinct personality. And I, I, I came to understand this today, why the Holy Spirit is a distinct personality. It is the combination of the divinity and the humanity. It makes it a distinct personality in some way because it doesn't have a form and it's a combination of the divine nature and the human victory of Jesus Christ. So it is a distinct personality. It is not, it is that mysterious personality of the Father and the Son combined together. And it, how they blend intrinsically, the Spirit coming from the Father and being shared to the believers by the Son, that combination is what makes it a distinct personality of the Father and the Son. And so Christ descended to have victory as a human being, then ascend to receive the glory which he had with the Father, and then fill all things on the earth by giving them various gifts according to the grace and measure of the gift of Jesus Christ. And so you cannot say that uh, the Holy Spirit gives gifts, and so it's a God. There is a mere supposition and a mere reading in the scripture, and we find that it is Christ who gives gifts. Um, Pastor Marambi goes ahead and says that the Holy Spirit anointed Jesus and sent him out to preach the gospel. And he quotes the book of Luke chapter 4 verse 18. Um, I wish we could stop here because this, th these are play games of uh, child uh, childishness. Uh, Luke chapter 4 verse 18, this is what it says. And people will be saying amen without looking at their Bibles, what it says. You'll find that and uh, the people just say amen, 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 and they are not looking at the Bible. Look, look at the book of Mark, uh, Luke chapter 4, verses 18. The, the Holy Spirit actually anointed Jesus Christ, and that proves that the Holy Spirit is a, a God. Luke chapter 4, verses 18, it says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, not God the Holy Spirit is upon me. Why read in the text what is not there? He has just warned us about not reading something that is not in the Bible, and yet he goes ahead to read in the Bible what is not there. It says that the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me. 
Who has anointed Jesus Christ? The Lord has anointed him with his spirit. Not that the Holy Spirit has anointed Jesus Christ. This overturning of the scriptures to read what is not written is actually what we call higher criticism of the text. And higher crit criticism is of the philosophers, which is a result of Grecian education, where they wanted to criticize everything and philosophize everything they read. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted and to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. You don't find in Luke chapter 4 verse 18 that the Holy Spirit is God that anointed Jesus Christ. There is a reading in the text that is not there. And this is a quotation from uh, the book of Isaiah chapter 61 verses 1. But um, let us go further. In the book of Luke, chapter 4, verses 18, do we have another verse that speaks of Luke, chapter 4, verses 18? We search in the scriptures and not anywhere else. How? Let us... Go to the book of Acts. I give you another verse that refers to the book of Luke chapter 4 verse 18. Luke, the, the book of Acts chapter 10 verses 38. The book of Acts, and let me blow it on the screen, the book of Acts. Brothers and sisters, you can see how the scripture are being stripped of their meanings with human suppositions and teachings which cannot be upheld by clear reading of the scriptures. This is what Acts chapter 10 verse 38 has to say. Remember, we are reading in Luke chapter 4 verse 18. Luke chapter 4 verse 18 says that the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. Now look at the book of Acts chapter 10 verse 38 how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. So it is not God, the Holy Spirit, that anointed Jesus Christ, but it is the Father who anointed Jesus Christ and how he went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. It is God who was with him because he had anointed him. Let us continue with this document of uh, Pastor Marambi. And this is, remember, this is being taught as the biblical truth of the Trinity. He goes ahead again and requotes John chapter 14, verse 16, and I'll not go through it again. And so he goes to what he calls observation. He says, the Holy Spirit act for itself as the Father and Son. He bears its own witness as the Father and the Son, they are co-eternal and one in unity. In purpose, the Holy Spirit sp speaks, guides, and hears, and shows. You will read the whole inspiration, Sister White, and the Bible, and you will never find where it is written that the Holy Spirit is co-eternal with the Father. These are mere suppositions. And he says that the Holy Spirit speaks and chooses and calls and sends forth. And he cites the book of Acts chapter 13 verse 1 and 4. And let us go to the book of Acts chapter 1 verses 4. I hope you are reading the verses and seeing that he is quoting things which are not there. Now there were in church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers as Barnabas and Simeon that was called Niger and Lucius of Cyrene and Manaen, which had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch and so on. And as they ministered to the, Lord, to, to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, Separate me Barnabas, Saul, and Saul for the work whereunto I have called them. The Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost says, separate for me. And let us look at this verse and compare it with other scriptures. The book of Acts chapter 
13 verses uh, verses 2 the Holy Spirit separated them and then uh, send them that is Acts chapter 13 verses 2 the Holy Ghost said And uh, I'd like you to notice something on this verse, too. And so, when you read in the Jewish Bible, it says that the Ruach said to them, set apart for me Barnaba and Saul. And this is what is written there. And we found that the work refers to the Spirit of God or the breath of God. But let us look at um, the book of uh, uh, of, uh, of Acts chapter, chapter 8 and see how this is working out. In the book of Acts chapter 8, Verse 26, we read this. And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise and go toward the south. And then in verse 29, it says, Then the Spirit said unto Philip. So, when you read the book of Acts chapter 3, 13, verse 2, you should have a, a, a con, a, you should have an idea of what is happening in the whole book of Acts. When it says that the Spirit said separate, when you look at the other parts, it says that the angel of the Lord spake. And, and then it says that the spirit spake. And we know that uh, uh, Jesus Christ is a spirit. The angel of the Lord is Jesus Christ himself, and he is a spirit. So it says that the spirit said, set them apart. In other parts, we read that the angel of the Lord spake, and then it translates to the spirit the Spirit spake to Philip. It said the angel of the Lord spake to Philip, and then the Spirit of God, the Spirit spake to Philip. And so the speaking of setting apart, the, the whole book of Acts is the acts of the Holy Spirit, and it is the Spirit of the angel of the Lord. We read that in uh, 2 Corinthians 3.17, which speedily says uh, that, uh, uh, 2 Corinthians 3.17, which says that uh, now the Lord is that Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. So the Lord is that Spirit that was actually speaking to the disciples in the book of Acts. That is what the totality of the scripture says. And if you don't believe that, you just have to go to the book of Mark. The book of Mark chapter 16, verses 19 and 20, where it says, So then, after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up in heaven, and sat on the right hand of God. Verses 20. And they went forth and preached everywhere the Lord working with them. So it is not another God, the Holy Spirit, working with them and telling them to set apart this one and this one. The Lord is that Spirit. He was working with them and confirming the word with signs following them. So it is the Lord which was working with the, the disciple. And so you don't even need Sister White to prove to you anything on these verses. The Bible explains itself. The Bible explains himself. And let us read something so interesting in the inspiration, uh, by the way, talking about the verses that we are talking about. It says in uh, Kolpotua Ministry, page 107, paragraph 4, the Lord Jesus star, the Lord Jesus standing by the side of the conversant, walking with them is the chief worker. If we recognize Christ as the one who is with us to prepare the way, the Holy Spirit by our side will make impression in just the lines needed. And so the, the setting apart, the working with the disciples, we are seeing that it is the Lord Jesus Christ standing by them and walking with them and doing these works. Let us go to the document of Pastor Marambi as um, 
we seek to wrap up these things. He says that the Holy Spirit has knowledge and searches all things. And what does he quote? First Corinthians chapter 2, verses 10 to 11. So let us look at First Corinthians chapter 2, verses 10 and 11. And I don't want to speak my words. I'll just speak what he speaks and respond with the Bible without deducing or adding on what it doesn't say. First Corinthians chapter 2, verses 10 to 11. He says that this is God, the Holy Spirit, because he searches and knoweth all things. So what does First Corinthians chapter 2, verses 10 say? I hope you will be edified by these studies and share them with your brethren. They will be on YouTube. Um, the gospel sounders will see to it that they are on YouTube so that you may be able to download and share with other people. You may convert them to audio so that you may share these things that we are speaking about. If you find that we are speaking error, then conduct us. We are free to accept we are in error and really uh, uh, be able to clarify what we are speaking if it is not in the Bible. So he says that 1 Corinthians 2, 10 to 11 proves that the Holy Spirit is God. God, the Holy Spirit. What does 1 Corinthians 2, 10 to 11 says? But God has revealed them unto us by his Spirit. And then that is God, the Holy Spirit. Really, a pastor shouldn't be doing this to scriptures. This is butchering the scriptures. This is so much injustice being done to the scriptures. So, he says, it says, But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit, for the Spirit searcheth all things here, the deep things of God. Verse 11, For what man knoweth the things of man, save what? The Spirit of man, which is in him. And so, look at these verses. It, it, it is contrasting the Spirit of man in the man. And then it goes ahead to say, even so the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. D does that prove that there is a person called the God, the Holy Spirit, who searches and knows the things which are there? No, it says that the Spirit of God, he knoweth the things that are in God because it is his own Spirit. And so I don't find here... In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 10 to 11, God the Holy Spirit. In fact, I will say that uh, the beloved pastor should confess that what he has advised people not to do is what he is doing and so repent of it. Reading into scripture what is not there. You can see that he is the one who is reading in the scripture and not us. And we are told that um, uh, here he says, the Holy Spirit resurrects the faithful from the dead. Now, this is interesting. And what is quoted there is Romans chapter 8, verse 11. So let us go to Romans chapter 8, verse 11, that the Holy Spirit resurrects the faithful from the dead. What does Romans 8, 11 say? But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from you, from the dead, shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Brothers and sisters, who resurrected Jesus Christ? Is it not the Father himself? Doesn't the Bible say that uh, actually it is God who resurrected Jesus Christ? So how does the pastor read in Romans 8, 11 and says that... Uh, it says that the Holy Spirit resurrects the faithful from the dead. When it is saying that the Holy Spirit of he who raised Jesus from the dead. Surely, this is the butchering of the scriptures. And so it says that the Spirit of he who raised the Jesus Christ from the dead will resurrect us. He will resurrect us. And so... It is God who raised Jesus Christ from the dead and not God, the Holy Spirit. So 
these verses that he continues giving are actually what he's not saying. He says, the Holy Spirit is the author of the Bible and moved upon the prophets to speak. And what verse has he quoted? Second Peter 1.21. And so let us go to Second Peter 1.21. It says, for the prophecy came not in all time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. And he says, the Holy Spirit is the author of the Bible and moved upon the prophets to speak. So the Holy Spirit is God. This is amazing. If you look at the scriptures the pastor is giving, they are amazing. And who actually authored the Bible? Is it God, the Holy Spirit? Let us ask, because he has quoted Peter, let us ask Peter himself who authored the Bible. Let us go to 1 Peter chapter 1. We, we will not go into any other author. 1 Peter chapter 1, read with me from verse, from verse 10. Of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently. Who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you? So he says that because Second Peter one twenty one says that the prophecy did not come in the old time by the will of man, by the holy men spake by the Holy Spirit. The prophets came by the Holy Spirit, so the Holy Spirit is the author. But quoting again Peter, who authored this? Let us read again. Of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently, who prophesied of the grace that should come? unto you, searching what or what manner of the time the Spirit of Christ, which was in them, did signify when it testified beforehand the suffering of Christ and the glory that should come. So, Second Peter one twenty one. For the prophecy came not in the old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit of Christ, it says that the Spirit of Christ was in the prophet searching of these things, how they shall be. And so how do you say that the Holy Spirit is the author of the Bible, and then that proves that the Holy Spirit is God, when actually it is the Spirit of Christ which was in them. And so you can see from all this presentation that we are playing with the word of God. We are really pray, playing with the word of God. And so he finishes his presentation there and goes to day three. And that is where I finish my presentation also. Second Peter 1.21 does not prove God the Holy Spirit. And brothers and sisters, we have gone through all the verses he has given to prove that God the Holy Spirit is God, the Holy Spirit, and uh, what we found is that it is the twisting of the scriptures, and it's not saying what it doesn't say. How did Pastor Marambi start his document? I'll carry you back to how he started and read one verse, and then we close. This is how he started. That... Uh, He said, in regard to personality and prerogative of God, where he is and what he is in subject which we are not to dare to touch, on this dim silence is eloquent, those who are, have no experimental knowledge of God venture to speculate in regard to him. And so he speaks about people speculating, but now who is speculating? The, all the verses he has given is a speculation or misconstruing the word of God. I'll and uh, I'm not talking this behind the pastor, but I have tried to reach unto him, but it has not been possible until now. I like to leave the pastor and all the people who are watching this and will be listening this to this. The book of Revelation chapter 22, verses 18. For I testify unto you, unto every man that heareth the words of the prophets of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, 
God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. This is the warning of the Lord upon the church. This is the same thing that uh, the children of Israel were told in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 4. This is what God told the, book, the children of Israel in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 4. He says, Now therefore hearken, O Israel, unto the statutes. Now hearken unto the statutes, O Israel, unto the statutes and unto the judgments which I teach you for to do them, that you may live, and go in and possess the land which the Lord, God of your fathers, hath given you. Ye shall not add unto the word which I command you, neither shall ye diminish aught from it, that you may keep the commandments of the Lord your God which I command you. So, God in the Old Testament, in the book of Deuteronomy, he forbids the children of Israel adding on the word of God or misconstruing it. And he warns the New Testament church the same thing. Do not add, do not remove. And so this misconstruing of the verses as has been done by Pastor Marambi, and he upholds this doctrine with his uh, 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 verses that are actually out of context, is actually a sad thing that is going on in Adventism at large. And I pray that the members will have the Bible, that, that they will read it and be able to come to the truth. Otherwise, may the Lord bless you and may the Lord keep you as you continue searching the scriptures. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you. We can't pass judgment on anyone. We still love Pastor Marambi and all that he's doing. But how, Father, we pray that the Holy Spirit may go forth and convict him of these things, that he may be able to recount the things he has said which are not true. We thank you for thy loving kindness, and we thank you for being with us even this time. And Lord, as we rest, uh, uh, we just pray that you may be with us. Let the holy angels, Father, uh, watch over us and protect us from the snares of the night. May thy will always prevail in everything, for in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless.